All right. So everybody enjoy their lunch. I had the chicken and fish. It was very delicious, but a little bit hard to keep down right before a presentation. So we'll see how this goes. I'm pretty sure I'll be able to hold on to it. So my uh, presentation is on uh, reconciling intent-defined storage with Cinder's volume-centric model. Now that is a little bit of a mouthful, but I promise we'll get into it and explain the, little, the, uh, the various pieces that uh, go into making such a complex title as this. So about me, I am a, uh, an employee of Deterra. We're a startup in Silicon Valley. I've been in the industry for about six years. Uh, I previously worked with automation frameworks and worked uh, for Riverbed, helping uh, design and develop their SteelScript automation framework, which was used for automating their various products, uh, including the Steelhead. Uh, currently, I am the maintainer of the, the uh, Deterra Elastic Data Fabric Cinder, dri Cinder Driver, as well as the Docker Driver and uh, Meso slash Mesosphere integration. Uh, because it is a startup, I have about a half dozen other jobs that I will not even go into. But that's just, uh, just typical startup life. Uh, I'm pretty terrible at presentations, so I'm just happy to be here. We'll see if we can make it through it. Um, so Deterra itself, uh, we are a startup in Silicon Valley. Uh, we were founded in 20, 2013 uh, with the intention of making a universal multi-cloud data fabric. Uh, one of our founding members is the author and maintainer of the LIO stack, Nick Bellinger. Uh, we launched our product and came out of stealth mode in April 2016. We have quite a bit of VC funding, uh, and we are currently getting our product out there to customers. We had about two petabytes of raw capacity in our first revenue quarter. We have about 60 employees, so we're getting on the, uh, the larger side of, of startups right now uh, from a variety of uh, very well-known companies. So the Deterra has a product. It's the Elastic Data Fabric. Uh, it's an iSCSI block hybrid and AFA scale-out storage solution. Again, a lot of buzzwords. But uh, essentially, it's just iSCSI. You have uh, flash and high-capacity spinning disks. Or you can go full, full flash with the product. Uh, it's also application-driven, intent-based cloud data infrastructure. And for this, I would expect everyone to go, what? What is that? Uh, so succinctly, it means that we don't provision volumes individually. Much So uh, legacy storage, if you want storage, you say, hey, I want this volume. We don't really do that anymore. Instead, you say, I want this application or applications worth of volumes or and, and this specific structure and, uh, and volume relationship, and we provision that all at once. Uh, it, it uses something called a, a template in order to do that. We have a template con templating construct uh, that we deal with. So on to templates. What is a template, a at least in, in terms of volume provisioning? So for us, it's a top-level object. Uh, it, it makes provisioning. Uh, this, this complex uh, set of storage much easier because you get to describe it all beforehand. You describe it all for your particular application. It's, it's uh, made specifically for it. And then you instantiate that template and you get all of the, all of the, uh, all of the things you previously described. Uh, so for example, in our templates, we cover snapshot policies, we cover authentication, IP pools, volume replicas, size, your typical QoS values, storage placement. Because we're a hybrid solution, you could place in uh, large capacity flash or in just hybrid itself. Uh, and also the complex storage and target array relationships. So all of those you can put inside the template. Uh, and as the product matures, because I mean we are a startup, the, the product is very new at this point, uh, we will be adding more and more features that can be described via this templating, templating structure. So well, in OpenStack, we already have the concept of heat templates. Why do you need another templating system? Well, from the perspective of OpenStack and heat, heat has to rely on uh, if you don't know what heat is, it is the orchestrator for OpenStack. It allows you to specify, uh, in, in a way, templates for the various different services of OpenStack so that you can provision the entire life cycle of a product in, in your OpenStack cloud from beginning to end. 
but it's it's one main limitation at least in 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 comparison to our product is that the um, the templating requires reliance on the Cinder API or Cinder API and Nova API and it, essentially every API that the services provide it has to rely on those it can't really do anything outside of that it has to go through those APIs which is really what OpenStack is about um, so if you're familiar with Cinder um, it, it has these APIs for creating a volume or creating an export or attaching uh, all of these different things. Now, for Deterra, our, our product on the back end, it doesn't really have a concept of just create volume or create export. These are not things that happen by themselves. A lot of other stuff comes with it because we are dealing with the concept of an applica application and not a single volume that you know, a, a service like Cinder is used to. Cinder provisions just by volume. It does have some additional things like volume group uh, and, and other things like that, but those ultimately are calls to create volume behind them. Like it still is dealing with each of these volumes individually, which is something that we as a company are trying to move beyond. Um, so Cinder just, it has no way to represent these relationships in the back end uh, with, without doing some real complex hackery on the front, which is essentially what heat is. So how do we get this to work with Cinder? So currently, all but the most complex target and uh, volume relationships are available for you to use in OpenStack with our current Cinder driver, which I developed. So uh, if you go and you get the, the latest version of the driver right now, you can provision um, a, an entire application's worth of uh, targets and volumes. It just requires uh, essentially pretending on the back end that it is multiple applications. <laughs> we are treating each volume as if it were its own application. Uh, it, at least in the current version of the Cinder driver, uh, there are plans to, to rectify this and make it so that er, there is a single application that represents all of the volumes that you have in Cinder for a particular application. Now, there's two ways that we can go. Right? And I'm going to walk through essentially how I do this in Cinder. So we have two ways of going about this. We can heavily leverage the concept of volume types in Cinder, which is uh, your ability to specify a, a series of key value pairs to associate with any volume that's created that has that type. Or we can lightly leverage it and instead leverage the Deterra backend to take care of a lot of that for us. So why would we choose one of, the, one of these over the other? So with the heavy volume type example, we have, well, it's not hundreds, but we have dozens of keys that we have to set for every volume type for every application instance that we want to associate with the volume type. So for instance, if we want to set the IP pools and bandwidth max, write max, total max, IOPS max, you know, all of these different keys, we have to set each of those individually for the volume type. And then when we instantiate that volume type, on the back end, it's represented as a standalone application instance with a single target and a single volume. And then all of these are set on that, um, on that application instance or that volume uh, individually. So it has no relationship with any other volumes that are instantiated. And so this is, this is all well and good. And up until now, our driver has pretty much worked that way. And it's, it, it's perfectly serviceable. If you want to have volumes that have no relationship with each other, you can do that. That is perfectly possible. Um, now, there's a better way to use our product, to be honest. <laughs> so uh, that, that's what this next option is, the light volume type option. So in this case, instead of specifying dozens of keys with all of their values, we'll instead just specify a template that we've created on the back end. In this case, we're using the key DF template. Uh, so I've created a, um, a template, my app template, that has all of, that, all of the information that we had previously specified here. It's already in the template. So we don't need to specify it in the volume type. 
Now, the driver understands that if a template key is specified in the volume type, it will go and every application instance that it creates will no longer be standalone, but it will instead be instantiated from this template. It will be, uh, in other words, bound to the template. And so if you instantiate you know, 50 volumes or 50 application instances, all of them will be bound, and, and sorry, and they're all of the same volume type, they will all be bound to that parent template. So the, the main advantage that you get from a relationship like this is that all the, all the child instances, all these child volumes in Cinder, are now bound to that template, and any changes to the template will now propagate to every single volume that you have. That, that, not to all that are on the Deterra cluster, but instead to all of them that are bound to this template. They're treated almost like a whole application. Uh, say, for instance, you had you know, a Hadoop cluster, and you had a template Hadoop or Hadoop cluster. You spin up 50 volumes of that Hadoop cluster, and you realize, hey, I realized that I set the cost too low on this, um, on this template. And so every volume that gets provisioned, the cost is too low. I want to increase that bandwidth for them. So you go and increase it on either on each individual template, or sorry, not on each individual template, but each individual instance. If you, you, you can go and change that on each instance. Or if they're bound to a template, you change it on the template, it changes all of them at once. It's just a single place that you have to change this. And because of that relationship, the change propagates. And it happens almost instantaneously. Um, in, a, in a traditional model, you would have to make a rest call to each of these different volumes in order to change them. You'd have to make a post call. Ultimately, that's much slower than just a single call to the template, which then modifies it and propagates the changes to the rest. So that brings us to the demo. Now. Let's see. Now, in, in my previous presentation, I did it Austin. I did this live. I'm not going to do it live anymore, <laughs> especially not from Barcelona. So it may be a little bit difficult to see. And I, I wish I had put annotations on here, but I'll walk you through it. So up here in this top box, we have uh, just, just a watch script that is watching Nova list, Cinder list, and Cinder snapshot list. Down here, I'm going to be running the script. But first, I show you the Deterra volume type that I've created. We've created the key, df template equals Barcelona demo. And that corresponds up here to this Barcelona demo template. That's already been pre-created. Pre it currently doesn't have a whole lot of stuff set on it, but at least we've created the template. Down here is the, uh, here, let me pause this because it's going a little too fast. So down here, we have the Deterra front end. So this is what you would look at uh, to interact with the Deterra box. We also have a very uh, well-defined REST interface for this, but a pretty GUI so nice. <laughs> um, it, it, it will show some performance metrics, the number of volumes that you've provisioned, the total capacity that you have for the cluster, um, and various, some various other things. So at this point, I've spun up about 10 VMs. Uh, you can see up there that I, it's actually created the volumes for these VMs first. Uh, those are created in Cinder, and they are of the Deterra volume type, which is pointing at this template. So every five seconds, that one up there will refresh. We've created the VMs now. Now, after I've created the VMs, I will attach these volumes to the VMs as scratch volumes. And then I will use FIO, which is a, uh, a storage load generator, and uh, run data to those, to those scratch volumes. Uh, once, once the data starts, which will take just a few moments, uh, you'll see some performance, uh, performance metrics pop up here on the front end. Now, an interesting thing is if you look up there at the template Barcelona demo, uh, right here, you can see all of these application instances that are bound to this template. Everything that's listed under here is bound to that template, and changes to the template will propagate to those. Now, you can actually correlate those application instances to the Cinder volumes over here. It's just by UUID. On our back end, we preface it with the, uh, with the ecosystem that happens to be doing the provisioning, in this case, OpenStack. So OS dash the UUID of the Cinder volume. Now, 
Uh, oh, good. We're getting some performance already, uh, or some, some data going. So at this point, we have, we have data flowing, and I want to restrict that, restrict that data. Every single um, application instance that's bound to the template will get the change that I made to the template. I, I reduced it, I believe, down to 10,000, or sorry, 10 megabytes per second. And that's a, a per volume value, or a per, um, per application instance value. So uh, we were doing 580 megs per second, and now we're doing about 50, <laughs> uh, since I have 10. Now, uh, that, that's obviously a, a, a very drastic case. It causes the latency to spike. Uh, so we'll go ahead and change this instead to be a, an IOPS-based uh, based QOS policy. So I set the QOS policy to zero for, um, or for bandwidth, and then I changed the max write IOPS to 100. So in a moment, you'll see that change propagate, and the performance will suddenly shoot up again, because it's now only restricted by IOPS and no longer restricted by bandwidth. Latency will drop a little bit. I mean, we're still restricting it, so latency is still fairly high, because those VMs are writing as literally as fast as they can. Yeah. So we saw the, uh, the performance increase a little bit. Now I'm just going to go ahead and remove any QOS policy that we have on there, and instead set up a snapshot policy. Um, so the snapshot policy was set to uh, take a, a snapshot every 15 minutes. We should have at least one snapshot now, but I'm going to go ahead and issue a snapshot, um, a, a snapshot creation through Cinder itself. So. Right here, we're going to issue that snapshot creation, and we're going to see what kind of performance penalty we get for snapshotting every single volume that's bound to this application template. So we have a little bit of a dip. It comes right back up, and we get all 10 snapshots showing up in Cinder. So then we can navigate to one of the, um, one of the application instances, and you can see we have two snapshots, one that was taken by the snapshot policy, and the other one that we called directly from Cinder. And so that's represented in both Cinder and the back end. And I believe that's the end of the demo. So anywho, um, this is how we, I've been going about uh, reconciling this difference between uh, Cinder, uh, Cinder's sort of volume-centric model and our application-centric model. Even with our application-centric model, we can still sort of emulate Cinder's, uh, Cinder's volume-centric one. Uh, and, and get the job done. But if we, if we leverage templates, uh, at least the way that we've designed them, we can get a lot more functionality than what you can get with just native Cinder and the um, uh, individual standalone application instances. Those relationships can turn out to be very powerful. Um, now, if you want to learn more about this sort of stuff, uh, please drop by our booth. I believe we're located right over here, um, uh, just to the side of the VMware booth. Uh, and, and come and ask me any questions that you'd like. Uh, I'll be here pretty much the rest of the week. So if there are any questions, I can take them now or I can take them there. Yeah. All right. I think we're good. Thank you.